welcome to today's episode of how the game was won and today i'm looking at the specific game between way with the white pieces and ding with the black pieces both players from china and the this game was played in as the second game of the two game classical time control match in round four of the FIDE world cup taking place in baku at the moment and without further ado let's have a look at this game i'm just going to flick through the opening couple of news over here quickly which allow you to be able to see that it was your normal standard um, spanish opening that was taking place but in order to be able to save time i'm going to skip ahead to um, the position after Black's 53rd move, because the end game part of uh, this game is the part that carries the most interest for me specifically. And the reason for that is going to become abundantly clear. Uh, White's 54th move is Rook takes d6, followed by h4 showing remarkable resilience in this position and here for instance uh, an alternative for white would have been to play g takes h4 with queen e5 check uh, queen g3 check queen takes g3 king takes g3 uh, rook e4 h5 rook takes b4 which is not an overly clear ending and even with the Nalimov table bases, it looks all remarkably drawish, even though white has two pawns to black's one. So let's get back to the position after black had played h4. Uh, here, way played king h3, which continued with the moves h takes g3, queen f5, queen takes f5, e takes f5, so the queen comes off the Queens are both off the board, which normally in this type of a, an end game would tend to tend to make you think that everything is heading straight towards draw. With uh, it's here, King F7, Rook takes G3, Rook takes B4, Rook D3, Rook C4, D6. Now here is a situation where um, Black should have played something along the lines of King E. 8 uh, with the possibility of white playing f6 or if white takes d7 uh, d check you got king d8 f6 rook f4 for instance which is all very much equal or well, getting back to uh, the f6 option you got rook f4 d7 king d8 rook, rook d6 b4 king g3 rook f1 King g4, b3, rook b6, king d7, which is again looking incredibly, incredibly equal. So, from this position, um, black's move of rook c8 could potentially be seen as the losing one. Um, but I'll be showing you another move a little bit later on in the game, which is, uh, shows a far more clear definition or differentiation between what was uh, the drawing option as as opposed to the winning option but the game continued with king g4 king f6 king f4 b4 king e4 rook b8 and here again uh white could have played rook b3 giving a little bit more of a clear advantage but this time around white um, erred away from what was the uh, correct winning combination as far as this end game was concerned and rook and pawn end games are notoriously difficult so stay closely focused on how all of this unfolds it's incredibly informative so white played king d5 which allows black into the game so to speak with b3 d7 b2 uh, rook b3, rook takes b3, 
and now you got uh, queen d8 check and king f5 and it seems amazing at the moment but white has no real way of being able to win the rook so even though white's got a queen and black's got the rook it's still looking incredibly drawish and and in just a couple of minutes a couple of moments you'll be able to see exactly why the game continued with queen d7 king g5 queen e7 king g4 queen e4 king g3 and queen g6 and now black played what was effectively the losing move of the entire game in this position what white so what black should play in this position is the move of king f4 bringing the king towards the center and more towards getting itself into a position of opposition against the uh, against the white king because if you notice there by playing by playing the move king f4 what black is effectively doing is blocking off it's not so much that square but blocking off these squares these squares for the white king which means that it becomes just that much more difficult for the white king number one to be able to force the black king away and it just becomes that much more difficult for the white king to be able to get into close to the b2 square and dislodge that black pawn so although uh, king f4 looks to be uh, or in this position playing king f4 is a dead draw and with my background as being a correspondence chess player i in th this type of situation i have the tendency to look across at my Nalimov table bases and while this game was basically being played out I had my Nalimov table bases open and yes the thanks to the those table bases and all of the hours and hours and hours and reams of computer data that is encapsula encapsulated in those Nalimov table bases the King F4 is uh, position is a dead dead draw it's really difficult to explain exactly why but what happens is it all comes down to a series of uh, checking sequences between the white king and the black king so the white queen and the black king um, that humans over the board are incapable of pro properly calculating but the uh, computers understand these kinds of positions way better than we do and it's just simply impossible for us to get to know this overly well but because blacks move the, the king close to the center which basically blocks out the, the white king all white is left with being able to do is play a series of checks with the white queen and the black king is able to move backwards and forwards and in each position that black moves backwards and forwards black is able to keep the white king away from making a positive impact into that b2 b3 uh, combinational uh, position that that black has so king f4 is the book draw and do yourself a favor open up nylum of table bases log this position in and play it through in all of its different combinations uh, it's vastly informative and it's the type of uh, key position that you do very well to know because the types of uh, patterns that play out on Nalimov from this position uh, will be able to help you in many, many, many different combinational aspects of uh, Rook and Pawn versus King Endgame. So, 
please keep that in mind. But instead of that, uh, Ding in this position played uh, King H4, which although seems to be the more logical position, what it means is it allows the King and Queen what uh, King and Queen combination to be able to get in behind the um, black b2 b3 position and effectively force the win and the game here continued with queen b1 and the chessboard is big but not big enough for that rook to be able to hide away and the game continues with king g5 king c4 rook b8 queen g1 check king f5 queen c5 check king g4 queen d4 check king f3 queen f6 check king e4 queen e6 check king f3 queen f5 and check and as you can see from this position that it is just simply a matter of time before white is able to force blacks the black king into a position where it will be a fork between where white will be able to use the queen to fork the black king and rook and effectively pick up the rook and once the rook falls the b2 pawn will fall shortly thereafter and will be king and queen versus king endgame which is a dead certain win for white so in this position ding resigned at way picked up the win which brings this match into a one all draw at the end of the classical games and with which forces this match across into the rapid and possibly blitz tie breaks which will be taking place tomorrow so that's effectively how the game was won please share this uh, video out amongst your chess friends don't forget to click the thumbs up button if you like this type of content thumbs down if not that way i know what to be putting out in the future and last but by no means least down below the screen here on youtube you'll be able to see a big red subscribe button please click that subscribe button that way you stay subscribed to my channel for all the new content that comes out on a day-to-day week-to-week basis stay safe up out there stay carved up for the win I'll be seeing you next time for another episode of How the Game Was Won. Till then, cheers.